what I want to show today is this cool um, illustration. First of all, this is a cover I did for uh, Ramsey's B, if that's how you say their name. I don't, I don't really know well, usually how to say a lot of EDM artist names, but this is a cover I did. It's really cool. And the key point here is the spaceship, right? Like it's a cool spaceship. It's, it's really dragging your eye in. And how I did it was I used the lasso tool. And that's how I use, that's how I make all these shapes, these graphic shapes you see everywhere. I use the lasso tool. And I really wanted to just make this video because I made a similar video on TikTok and um, Adobe commented on there. It's really cool. Like I, I've done a couple of videos like this where I use the lasso tool to show how I paint characters or cityscapes or whatever. And if you look at a lot of, if you look at a lot of my uh, illustrative work, my 2D artwork, my covers, all those things, I use, uh, I have kind of like a look and I can do a whole separate video on discovering your style and figuring out your style and all that kind of stuff. But for now, I just want to focus on the lasso tool specifically and how I'm able to get like these interesting shapes and just how I use it. And if you use the lasso tool a lot, uh, if you if you use the lasso tool a lot, you probably know all of this stuff already. So, um, but some of you who don't, and I still get questions about how I'm doing this stuff, um, this video is for you. So lasso tool can be a lot of fun. It's a great way to just like capture a lot of shapes and then paint within them, kind of like clipping masks and all that. It's really fun. So this is how I made the spaceship. I grab the lasso tool and get it to be like the free one, not the polygonal lasso tool, just the free one. Because the first tip is that you can switch between the freehand lasso tool and the polygonal lasso tool really fast. So by doing that is if you start drawing something organic with the lasso tool and then hold alt on the keyboard, when you let go, it turns into a polygonal tool. So then you can just kind of click around and it will make the hard edges. And then if you click and drag again, it turns back into an organic shape. So this is one way that I get uh, a good mix of hard and soft or hard and, and, and round edges when I'm making a lot of my shapes and, and figures and, and all that kind of stuff. So for the uh, spaceship, let's say we do something like this and then I hold shift to add a shape. So once you've made a shape like this, you can hold shift and make a new shape. What's cool is that you can combine both of those, those things I just mentioned. So you can press and hold shift to make a shape. And then while you're still holding down the left mouse button, click alt. So now I'm holding down shift and alt at the same time. And you start getting these polygonal shapes. And then when you let go, you get the shape that you want. So if I wanted to make that spaceship, I, it kind of has like this core body. And then it has like, you know, uh, impressions of wings and then like a tail or something like that. And I know right now it looks like a Christmas tree, but this is essentially the way that I did it. And so I just kind of curved it out, give it some like personality so that it's not super rigid and it has a lot of this like forward motion. Uh, the other thing is that if you add a shape and then you want to delete something, when you don't have anything clicked and your mouse just looks like this, like you're not drawing anything, if you click Alt, I know it's kind of confusing, Shift and Alt are both the only buttons you'll be pressing. But if you click Alt without drawing anything, it turns into a negative symbol, and then you can delete things. So really you can do a lot with the lasso tool and you can just kind of, as long as you don't click away, because as soon as you click away, it goes away. As long as you don't click away, you can slowly make all the, all the shapes that you want and just kind of uh, add shapes, remove stuff, add, remove. It's really fun, really iterative. Uh, that's the right word to use here, hopefully. Uh, but yeah, I learned this from, I think I learned this method or this way of using the lasso tool from Mache Kuchara, who's a concept artist. And that's kind of where a lot of my um, ideas and ways of digital painting comes from concept art because I really wanted to do concept art for a long time and I did I did get to do concept art oh, as a freelance artist but I didn't do uh, a ton I, I, got, I got to work on a couple small indie games and films and things like that but never you know quite made it into the industry and working on those big AAA games maybe one day so this is essentially the, sip, the spaceship and I know it looks like the Grinch like Christmas tree but once you do that once you have the shape down you go here, you can you know, make it a clipping mask or you can lock it, do both at the same time. But once you have it like this, you can continue using that method. So you, let's say you wanna start kind of defining a little bit of that shape. So I'm gonna just pick like a, a darker color to get like shadows. And you start kind of modeling the ship out, like the way that whatever makes sense. Uh, yeah, I mean, you get the idea, it's not perfect, but this is how I did the spaceship for the illustration this one and I just kept repeating that method 
the other part there's a second part to this to know how i did this glow and how i got these like interesting colors on the white of the ship that is another thing i learned from another concept artist john liberto i think i think that's how you say his name he is like the art director or was the art director on the halo games another great artist that i follow and i really love his work he has a really really cool way of painting like uh, you should definitely I'll link his stuff down in, in the description But the way he works is this really like painterly style. It's really impressionistic and he uses a lot of colors And he uses them in wacky ways if you ever watched any of his tutorials You can really see how he'll like photo bash his own painting into the painting and all this kind of stuff It's really cool and he is able to get these like really interesting colors So this is something I showed in another TikTok video I made um, a while ago and it blew up well, people loved it but in this video, I'm going to combine two of my really popular uh, videos into one. So let's see. So if we want to make this glow, I mean, it's already in a dark room, so it, it kind of does have a glow to it. But one of the cool ways to do it is, let me just add a quick gradient, something interesting. Uh, oh, I'm going to show, I'm about to give you an extra secret. Not, not extra secret tip, an extra tip. So if you're making gradients, if you wanna make just like weird abstract backgrounds, this is what I do. I make these gradients kind of like this, and then I go into uh, transform and warp, and then you can just like really warp them crazy and just get some really unique like shapes that you wouldn't have gotten otherwise just through like the default gradient way. I don't know, like this is just a fun way to add like extra color and, and, and like interesting shapes into the background. So that looks kind of cool. There's like this motion here. So if you want to add a colorful like glow in the way that I did in this painting here, um, this is how I do it. I'm going to do it really quick and rough, but you kind of get a brush like this. By the way, if you want these brushes, like all of this stuff, I got these from, I got these a long time ago from Matthias Zemecki. I think that's how you say his name. He's another brilliant artist does 3d 2d he's, he's really amazing and he released this brush pack a long time ago i downloaded it he doesn't host it anymore on his website it's a lot of stuff here there's a lot of stuff and he he put it together but people were asking for these brushes so he was like so i said hey do you still have this brush pack he said no i said do you mind if i just put it up and let people download it so he said he was very vague about it, but I think he said yes. So if he says no after watching this video or whatever, I definitely take him down. But he definitely gets all the credit for putting these brushes together. I think they're a combination of brushes that like he made and then other artists have made that he's put together into this like ultimate brush pack. But I will leave a link down to download this brush pack as well because it has a smudge brush. It has smudge brushes in it already. And those are nice because like I use those for this technique coming up. So I get a, I get a kind of like a scraggly regular brush. And then as John Liberto has said in the past in his videos, just take like colors from light, you know, like the standard light colors, like blue, red, colors that you would see around a, a lamp sometimes. I, I don't know, I guess don't look at the sun, but like if you look at a light or in a photo or something, you'll see some of these colors sometimes as I like a halo around it. So I grab my brush, I grab a really light color like blue, start with blue, and then I press like three on my keyboard to go like 30% opacity or 10 even. And then I slowly start moving the moving um, the paint around it. And I just kind of layer it. And it looks sloppy and when I first did it, it was kind of sloppy and weird and didn't make any sense to me. But as you slowly build up the colors, specifically using like bluish and reddish color. Purple is a good one, like purple and green, going back between purple and green, it starts to kind of add this cool uh, glow. And if you zoom out, like if you zoom all the way out, you can kind of start to see like the edges have this glow. It's like a, it's like a chromatic aberration kind of effect. And then we take a little bit of green. And what's fun about this technique is that you can really use whatever color you want. And the more you experiment with it, the more different uh, colors you layer and experiment with different colors, the more the effect becomes a lot more like interesting. So now it's kind of got a warmer glow because I added red. I go back to blue, a dark blue, and I add that. And basically you just keep repeating and going over and over and over again. For the sake of time, I'm just gonna merge that into all into one layer. And then if I go click on S, my shortcut is my shortcut usually is S for smudge, but I haven't updated it in a while, so it's stamp and I don't want that 
So go here, grab the smudge brush. It's already there for you pre-selected. It's gonna be the strength of 16, that's not bad. Let's see how that looks. Okay, cool. So smudging is where the effect really shines. Uh, you, you start smudging away some of the details and then you're just left with this color that you've made. And then additionally, I think it helps to smudge a little bit of like the harder edges of the shape as well because it just blends it together and you know maybe this is my own personal style and effect that i like to use but there now it kind of has a bit of a glow and and you just repeat this make sure sometimes to go back in and redefine your core shape because it will get lost with all the smudging and stuff so i go back in i get white and then make it pop again then go back to click Get the color, lower the opacity, and I just kind of do this all around the shape again. And it, it's it is a iterative process, if that's the word for it. So you can sometimes go on top. I wouldn't go like down the middle, down the core of where the glow is, because it'll start to get like I don't know. Just I've done it and it didn't work out for me. But yeah, like. It looks weird and sloppy, but again, this is my personal style and how I have kind of found what works for me. And it takes a little bit of time, you know, getting it down. Oh, it's the stamp. Um, take a little bit of time getting it down, but we can get there. Anyway, I'm going to show you some examples of some stuff I've done in the past. I mean, this cover is a good example of using that technique. Another good example is this one or this one. This one, I've done it a bunch. And if you want to see more of my work, you can go to my website. But uh, yeah, I hope you enjoy the video and um, talk to you in the next one. Bye.